Have you ever been fortunate enough to hold a golden retriever puppy? Well, I have. The man I sat down to talk to this week had just brought home that very day this sweet little muffin cake of a creature. And that little pup sat in his lap during our entire chat. Yes, I did get to hold him, the puppy, not the man. And I'll tell you, it awakened a maternal instinct in me that I didn't even know I had. He was so precious, I could barely handle my own existence. But enough about me. My guest this week is a musician, yoga instructor, and one of the piano players that you can go see perform at the Dueling Piano Bar called The Shout House, right here in downtown San Diego. We talk about combining creative passions and the flakiness of the dating scene, among other things. So with that, I hope you enjoy this conversation I had with Mr. Jonathan Coyle. How are you? How am I? I am... <laughs> you have a puppy on your lap. So you're a puppy on my lap, so it's hard to so not So you're amazing. Well. Yeah. So you're amazing. Yeah, he's That's eating hilarious. the microphone, oh, too. Oh, he's so cute. So cute. How have you been, though, for real, over the last several years? It seems like a lot has changed. It's true. So, man, that's a, like, is that a big that, question? That, that is a hard question. How have I been? Um, I mean, I could just say good, right? How, <laughs> you could. Could I just say you good? Could just could say just good. Tip to the next. You no, could say um, good. No, I think overall, right now, from right now, it's like a, a really good. Like things feel really good at this point in life. Like, yeah, just taking inventory about like where I'm at, looking around it, just some things that have happened uh, in my life, my family, and just overall, I think I'm in a Luckily, at this point in time, feeling like I'm in a good place. That's awesome. And how is the Shout House? I haven't been there yeah. in a really long time. The Shout House is, it's honestly, it, it hasn't changed very much. Yeah. Uh, I think the, big, the biggest thing that's changed over there is that you, I've noticed that the show, the content, um, at least when I started, just a lot of like the outright, like kind of raunchiness factor and uh, like it's it's doesn't go over as well anymore, which I think is a good thing. Really, and I think part that's of kinda, it, that's kind of surprising. Yeah, I think some people still enjoy that, but I know when I started and, and Adam was there, and Adam's not there anymore. Uh, we we were kind of tapping into trying to take things a little bit, trying to be a little more creative about, you know, if you're gonna call somebody up every song and just you know, just go for like the shock value. It's uh, closer. It's it's almost like too easy. Like how can you think to be more creative? So, <laughs> so yeah, it's been. But I've noticed, and, and, I, and part of it, I think, is like the times are changing, you know, people, like what, what's okay to say, what's politically correct, and yeah. especially in the climate we live in now, it's almost like, on one hand, you know, we elected a president who has like broken the barriers of decency on so many levels. Yeah, what happened yet, there? Yet, but, well, yeah, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> but the interesting thing about that is I found that it's, in many ways, it's actually like kind of heightened the, the sensitivity frequency in terms of like a lot of the like mainstream people you see are like almost like in a way of like becoming more aware of how we're coming across with our words maybe yeah people are feeling like they have to be a little bit more careful because people it's it's just a heightened awareness of it right yeah now. so um anyway but shout house is fun i i think the challenge with that place or that job is like um maybe like anything it's just to kind of stay fresh and not go on autopilot mode and yeah you know, for you're sure. playing a lot of the same songs over and over again so how do you make it new? And some nights it's easier than others. So is um, there like, there's like a creative process with you guys working together and maybe like those, uh, the songs that you do as a band when you guys come up together? Yeah. So it's, yeah, I'd say overall a lot of, a lot of, yeah, we, we tr like we, we get together once in a while and kind of work as a team, but a lot of the newer ideas usually come from like one or two people having an idea and kind of putting it together and then working it in through the group. So I don't know if, when I'm in that mode of trying to think I'm, I'm usually have like my pad out and I'm constantly like writing down an idea, like probably much like a, like a comedian would approach something like always like fine tuning and, um, you know, thinking about what's relevant and like what situations can kind of like lend themselves to the show. You know, like we do a lot of birthdays, bachelorette parties, graduation, so it's graduation season. Mm -hmm. What, you know, what can be a funny way to like do a song for college kids who just graduated, you know, I'd, bring them up on stage and I had one one bit I wrote where I was like trying to offer up an internship at the shout house where I basically just <laughs> make them buy the piano players drinks all night oh that's perfect the stage yeah you that's know. perfect that's how you take care of yourself all night yeah like that how long have you been there so I've been there this is, I've been there for eight years now oh wow eight yeah. years how did you end up there because you're not from here you're from New York from New York yeah um 
So, yeah, I, I came out in 2003, and I was in a band for a while, and I think we were doing, we did pretty well. But overall, like, you hit a point, I think some people are more serious than others, and then things start to change, and oh, puppies making noises. <laughs> and uh, I really, like, I needed something new, and I just, a friend of mine told me about it. I showed up there, and I saw the show, and I was like, that's interesting. So I put a feeler out there and threw an email, and they just had me come in. I played a song or two, and they were like, okay. They were like, you're good enough to do this. Do you want to do it? Yeah. And, and then I, you have to learn about how to like be an entertainer and not just be a musician. Sure. There's yeah. a huge level of that, of keeping the crowd going all night. Yeah. And the funny thing is, like, I didn't actually think I would be good at it at all. And and it's like, I, when I got on stage, it like I tapped into a part of myself, like a real extroverted part that I didn't know I have. Like, I'm a lot of times people, I get this a lot, people are like, wow, you're really different than I thought you were. Because on stage, I'm like, usually like really outgoing and just kind of, you know, even like... I don't know, just off the cuff, like really energetic. And I think I'm a little more laid back off stage. So people are. Yeah, it's two different modes, right? I know. And the I think some people, I think a lot of performers can be like that. I know Billy, Billy Joel had a quote saying, like, I'm the most boring person you've ever met when I'm not on stage. Right? Yeah, but you learn how to turn it on, right? Yeah. And I don't even know if it was learned. It just feels like it, like automatic. Like when I get up there, like, there's a, like, it's like this alter ego takes over. That's it's perfect. a cool feeling. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. I mean, you have to learn music so quickly. Is yeah. that Does that come from you just have such a solid foundation in music that you're able to pick things up quickly? Is that something you had to develop while you when you started there? Honestly, like I've always been able to just hear a song and play it. I, don't, really? I, I never learned how to do that. It just was something I could do. So That's convenient. It's, it's very convenient <laughs> that I found a job that actually that skill set lends itself. Yeah. I was just telling the story the other day when I played that, that, that gig for the, the people, the 70 people about how, like when I started out with music, I, I showed promise from a young age. Like I was definitely talented and, you know, could play by ear. Um, but then much like a lot of people, I just, I took piano lessons and didn't like it. I was taught the classical and the structure and I, and I ended up stopping music for a while. And then in high school, I started listening to music. And then I think I was at a party and somebody had a piano and, I started playing piano and one of the girls who was like three years older than me liked me. And I was like, okay, I'm going to be a musician now. Uh, and no, I'm serious. Like I believe you. It was, <laughs> it was, I've, um, yeah. So, but seriously, like ever since that night, I realized like, okay, I was the guy at the party who like sits on the piano and everyone comes around and plays and sings. Like it feels like a good place to be. And I just kind of have always done that in college, you know, like it's, it's just, it's something that brings people together. Um, so it's really cool that I found like a place where that's the concept is like just people come in and they come together through music that they all love and they sing together and they, you know, just get into it. And I get to kind of be uh, like a vehicle for that enjoyment. So yeah. it's a really like, it's honestly, it's a huge gift. And I'm sure like a lot of creative types and musicians, especially, you know, are very much in tune with how, like how powerful it can be. And I think we can, most of us can agree that like, it's the reaction that other people have that is like what fuels us. And when we realize, you know, it's like seeing ourselves up there and what we create, it's like, it's just very powerful. It's a powerful experience. It seems really amazing. One, because it's, it seems like a very rare situation to be able to be in, to do something like that. Two, that you're getting to do something that feels very natural. And three, it really has to put you directly in the moment all the time. You have yeah. to be very in the moment to do that kind of so that Job, that actually right. is extremely true. And, and like at the Shout House in San Diego, like sometimes when people ask like what I do and I'm like, it's kind of weird saying, oh yeah, I work at a, like a dueling piano bar because for one, like half people are like, what the hell is a dueling piano bar? <laughs> um, part of me feels like it sounds like I'm the dude who's like, you know, still like sitting in like the corner at a, like some hotel bar playing and it's almost like, and I, I almost want to be like, yeah, I work at this doing piano bar, but I, like, I swear, like I get healthcare too. It's like, right, and it's you, a real job. you just got to explain the yeah. whole thing first. Yeah. Um, but, but then the people that do know it, they're like, oh yeah, no, I love those places. Like I went to the one in Vegas. It was great. And then it's like, honestly, I've, I don't, and I hope, I hope a lot of other doing piano players don't hear this, but like, <laughs> I think I've very, I don't know if I've ever really been to another club where I walked in and actually really felt like, oh, this is awesome. There, the Shout House Minneapolis, there's some players out there that I really liked. And and I've met a few other people in the business, 
who have come into San Diego and played who I respect. But most of the places I've gone to, I'm just seeing the same, the same recycled material, the same just kind of autopilot response. Um, and and it's, it's very uninspiring to me. I yeah. don't know. Because and you should be feeding off the audience. Because you were just saying about being in the moment. And mm-hmm. like to me, I feel like a lot of it, like I believe that the people who invented this concept were these incredible musician, comedian types who were just really clever, putting ideas together and kind of keep, they kind of developed this repertoire. And I think at some point or another, a lot of people just said, okay, well, we're just going to just dip into that repertoire and kind of recycle everything and not create the new stuff, the next wave. And so it's one thing to kind of like pay homage to some of the bits that have been in for a long time, some of the routines. It's another thing to just kind of like, I don't know. It seems like a comedian who goes up on stage and does someone else's act. Yeah. Like, or he does the the same act forever. Yeah. Without creating new. Yeah. And to be honest, I've gone up there and I've like heard a punchline from someone and I've delivered it because I knew it would get some great response. So it's like, you know, I'm not any better, I guess. And, but at the same time, like I, I've, I think I've contributed a lot of repertoire too. I know like there's people um, in our club and other clubs that actually like will use material that I wrote. So I, I feel like good about that. Okay. At least I contributed something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you find something that works, yeah, then why not? Yeah. Okay. So, so this is, this is funny. Cause I just like specifically, cause especially I don't, people listening, they're probably like, well, they don't really know the concept. They're not going to be able to relate, but so being a bald guy, right? <laughs> so I, I thought of an idea for like kind of this autobiographical autobiographical um, lament about being a bald guy. But it kind of starts out all sad and like, you know, reflecting, oh, why did I have to lose my hair? But then it gets to the the punchline in the chorus. And essentially it's kind of citing this, this research study that was done where it was proving like baldness to like increase testosterone and increase virility. Mm -hmm. So like, I think the punchline is like bald guys are better in bed. Right. And so I sing the song and it's funny because I'll bring all the bald guys in the room up and we'll have this like big bro bald moment where everyone's arm in arm. And it's, it's just like fun. It's you know, amazing you see, yeah. bonding moment yeah, with all these really, men. Yeah, it's really like stuff like that. <laughs> it's like, okay, cool. Like I found something that's like kind of true to me. Yeah. That is it's like perfect a for that kind way. of room. Yeah. And, and so it's, and it still kind of fits the mold of the adult humor that we do there. So there actually is room to be creative in, in the sense of like, even though a lot of people are there to hear brown eyed girl and don't stop believing, sure, which is great. But then there's also room to like, kind of bring in your own, your own twist to it. Yeah. And it, some of the people that I've met in this, in this gig, um, like Adam Johnson, you know, being one of them, especially like he's, he, he was always like very creative and brought some great ideas and him and I really enjoyed working together. And when he was there, I, I think that that was a really good period in terms of like kind of rewriting the next chapter for where the gig would go. Yeah. That's awesome. What do you feel like? So most of the time people are requesting the older songs, right? I mean, is that most of the time? Not necessarily. Yeah. What are the new songs that you feel like everybody's requesting? You know know what's funny about that is that, and this is like a reality check to me because I'm 36. I still think about like, I don't know, even like nineties music feels like newer music because compared to, I feel like, I feel like it was a decade ago. Like those memes are true. Someone requested, um, third eye blind. Like, Oh, it's kind of a newer song. And then you're like, song is like two 20 years old it's like it's weird huh yeah so and it's weird to think that like the the medium age in the room are probably people about my age so i can play songs from when i was young and it's like that's the songs they were young too as well so it's it's yeah it's kind of a reality check um (laughs) the newer music is almost a little harder to pull off in some ways because it's very much like electronically produced so you have to be very like yeah that's gotta be tricky to try to kind of pull that off on the piano mm-hmm. um is, is a bit of a challenge sometimes but it's also i guess fun to watch us try to <laughs> there's something about watching like and it's like everybody i work with is super talented but like we're all kind of nerds in our own right like music nerds mm-hmm. like and so to watch us try to like pull off like you know rapping dr dre and even if we can do it, it's still, there's something about it that, that just is like, oh man, these guys are ridiculous. Yeah. How your rap yeah. skills doing? Oh man. They're solid. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I, I get into it. I don't know if <laughs> don't that's know. important. So, <laughs> yeah. I think I'm like the guy who's like a really bad dancer, but really into it. So you have to have some respect on some level for me. All that matters is you're enjoying it. Exactly. Exactly. That's all that matters. Yeah. When did you start yoga? Um, I started yoga in 2002 in college. 
my roommate had a yoga video, I think. Yeah. I remember the guy's name was Rodney Yee. He was this Asian guy with like a long ponytail. Perfect. Well, actually, I found out li- is, lives on Long Island now and is a very respected member of the yoga community. A lot. Um, like I've heard his name throughout. But I, yeah, I just did this video and he's just like this guy, like, you know, just super flexible doing all these poses. And I'm like You're sitting like, there like do that? a mess. Like, no, I'm like <laughs> the least flexible person. Even today as an instructor, people, I think they expect me to like be able to even like, like do a split. And it's like, yeah, I'm like, I, I guarantee you, like there's first time people that come into yoga who are like twice as flexible as me and they've never done yoga before. It's just, well, it's funny. Is it shows you what areas of your body are more capable than others? Yeah. It really points out your weaknesses. Oh to God, yourself. no, definitely. Exactly. Like I have a ridiculously tight upper back. Yeah. So certain things are really, really tricky for me exactly. and I struggle with them, but then other things seem to come really, really naturally. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so you have a really good bridge pose because I was used to do gymnastics. See, exactly. And, stuck and with bridge me. for me is like, uh, well, br- not bridge, but the wheel pose, you know, where you're like, like yeah. Upward. Yeah, that one's a hard one. For some reason, I struggle with half moon. That's, I mean, to hold the balance is tough. Yeah, I get all confused. That's actually, I think, in my top three favorite yoga poses, half moon. Yeah. Yep. I, I like it when I can do it. Yeah. I got to be in the right headspace, I think. They're fun. <laughs> yeah. No, so yoga is incredible. I mean, like, it's it's really funny when you say the word yoga how like how many different responses people have almost like because people who practice yoga kind of get it that it's obviously more than the physical practice and um and there's a lot of elements to it but then there's a lot of people too are like that same reaction oh yoga it's like weird it's like i'm um, like chanting and it's like some yeah. indian practice people have these and, like preconceived notions of yeah. what it is and it's usually because they haven't tried it yeah or like some people are like oh i hate yoga i can't do yoga it's like it's way too slow for yeah. me i hear that reaction a lot or people and, have closed themselves off to it because they tried it one time and yeah. then they realized that they weren't really flexible and then they just say that's not for me yeah i i definitely have like i'm mentally like my mind is moving a lot I, some people i think are a little more on like the 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 kind of a, a softer frequency mentally, but like, I'm like, that's one of my biggest challenges is like, I'm always like analyzing and, you know, looking ahead and, you know, and that, that Are you an trait, overthinker? Yeah. Oh, definitely. And that Me trait too. lends itself to anxiety. Me too. Um, so that's <laughs> something I struggle with. So yoga, you know, yeah, like yoga is not comfortable because I have to slow that down. I have to confront it. Um, so yeah, it would be probably easier to just go and like, like run a bunch of stairs and go like CrossFit style, which is a value, but I do the yoga to confront that, to get better at that. It's like you kind of work at your weaknesses. So That's absolutely what it is. Yeah. And it does force you to kind of slow down. And it's funny because you, you're you a very like mellow person. I'm always told that I'm a very mellow person. Yeah. Well, I mean like, you know, when you're off stage, you're, yeah, I think you, so. you have yeah. a very calm energy. But you say you have a mind that works really quickly. Yeah. And I'm the same kind of person where my mind is super, super active, even though I, I'm yeah. pretty mellow on the outside most of the time. Definitely. So... So doing yoga for me is that point where I have to figure out how to slow it down. Yep. Yeah. And I'm not as good as you for sure because I've been watching your videos. <laughs> I've seen those. That's the cool thing too is I, I remember I, I had a, a teacher who really broke through to me. I think I discovered him online and he's a very famous yogi. His name is Brian Kest. And um, I just remember the way he was kind of communicating. And he has a really direct, almost like, can actually be off-putting to some people because he, he'll curse and he'll say inappropriate things sometimes. But he kind of breaks through a little bit of that, like, let's find our center and find our chi and dial in. You know, like, you yeah. know, like, and kind of the yoga voice that a lot of teachers have, like, mm-hmm. which is, you know, like that can turn people off. Especially I'm an East Coaster. I'm a New Yorker. Like, I appreciate sometimes like just getting into the nuts and bolts of it. Yeah. And I remember this guy, he was saying something about this pose is called like bending over and, you know, and for a couple of seconds. He's like, that's all it's, I was like, okay. That's but he, all it really yeah, and it was, is. But it's kind of true. Like, he's like, this, and this might be the only pose you do today, but that would be enough because you'd be doing this and you'd be taking care of that. And I just never, I was always like thinking about what's the next pose and just the way he communicated it was like, okay, well, yeah, how can I explore this one? And I remember he said something, I think the point is not to like, see if your head can reach your knee. I mean, like, who cares? Like, what's that going to do? the point is to keep working on it. And eventually maybe if that's what's supposed to happen through the practice, maybe your head will reach your knee and maybe it won't. But that's kind of like my practice because I've started getting a little more advanced in terms of like arm balances and inversions. It's the same deal. I never, I never worked with that with my goal. 
I do it now, but I never like moved into it like like a drill sergeant. Like I got to do this. I got to do this. It was just something that kind of gradually started to happen. So I look. I kind of look at it that mentality of like not forcing it. And maybe one day I won't be able to do. Obviously, probably at some point I'll be too old to be able to hold my whole entire weight upside down on my hands. But that's probably a long way off, though. I hope so. Well, it's fun if you're taking care of your body. I feel yeah. like these things can last for a while. As I drink a sip of whiskey. That's we're still taking. It's neat. It's true. We're not, we didn't put soda in it. You're right. You're right. <laughs> That's better, right? Definitely. But yeah, that makes sense that he, when he talks to people like that, maybe they're able to, to connect to it a little bit better. It makes it feel more um, relatable to them. Yeah. You know, rather than some like super spiritual thing that they feel like maybe they're, they're not fully there yet mentally. And that's the thing. I think people have to kind of, if they are going to go there, they need to kind of go there at their own time. Unless like, I don't know, it's like anything, like you've had certain teachers who just kind of get through. You, like, it's like that, like Robin Williams in Dead Poet Society, you know, like this teacher comes in and he's just like so well-spoken and so inspiring. Like certain teachers, hopefully you'll discover in your lifetime and that will kind of like put you on that page. And, and I've had some great teachers. But the cool thing with yoga is I always was that guy in the class who was just like, I mean, for one, let's be real. I mean, like, especially 10 years ago when I started practicing, I'd be like maybe one of two guys in the room and there's like 20 girls. Yeah. You know, which... Um, feels like it's only been in the recent couple of years that guys have really gotten into it and feel comfortable more going so, to a class. Exactly, yeah. Because before it was most, they're like one guy in there. Exactly. When so I used I, to go, that's what it was like. And sure. I was always that guy. And the, not only just that guy, that guy who like just very ungraceful in my <laughs> body. I've always been athletic, but just not. It's a that, different you, thing. Yeah, it really is. It's a different is. beast. So eventually I started getting more into it. And then I did a teacher training. That was really big. And like if anybody is listening to this who, you know, is kind of like, developing their practice and has the opportunity to do a teacher training at a studio or with people they respect, even if they have no full desire to become an instructor, a teacher training is just an incredible thing to do. You learn so much. You immerse, it's an immersion, you know, for two and a half months, it, like the, I'd be constantly thinking about yoga, practicing yoga, um, studying and meeting people who were like-minded who are still friends. So that's huge. It's yeah, a community thing too. It really is. So that was, that was huge. Yoga is such a vast universe that it's like you kind of like keep burrowing into different depths of the practice. And at first, maybe it starts physically and then you kind of feel like, oh, now my mind feels a little more calm. Maybe it's more meditational. But then you start like kind of getting even deeper and like seeing how far that can go. And and then all of a sudden now, like for me, I'm like an instructor. And, and not only that, I feel like I can tell that I'm having a positive influence as an instructor. I see people coming regularly to class and learning. And that it's like, I'm just kind of like, wow, I'm actually an instructor. Like it's kind of yeah, a newer concept. What made even, you decide to actually be an instructor? I don't really know. Um, <laughs> it just happened. I don't know. It just showed up. No, I, I, it's weird. Like I sometimes like the idea of like being an instructor, I'm like, I almost feel like a hack in some way. Cause um, that's a very common thing. I think even when you're really good at something, there's a lot of people that feel like they're, they're somehow like a phony even yeah. when you're good at something. Yeah. And I don't know if that's something that's just weird. It's wired into our minds or something. I think that maybe it keeps you humble, true. though. Maybe that's a good thing. I, I think so. No, I think that's that's definitely true. Yeah. But I've noticed, um, like, at least right now as an instructor, where it makes me effective is that I'm my practice is very much alive. And so when I go in to teach, it's like I'm sharing things that I'm working on in my own life, in my own practice. In my So not just like something I've been doing, just like with music where it's like this automatic thing. Like I was saying, like, it's something that's very, like I'm experiencing it ever on a daily level. And I think people can feel that. And so I think my classes can be a little more like, Hey, we're doing yoga together as opposed to, I'm going to tell you my ways of wisdom, which, right. you know, it doesn't come from a place of like ego. Yeah. It comes from sharing this moment with these people. Yeah. But being a yoga instructor is, is, is a, incredibly challenging for different reasons and there's so many things you have to be aware of obviously like you're giving people physical cues directions on where to put their body like just saying bring your right hand to your left calf that that alone is if you need to put that in a good way if you if you're confusing and you say okay now raise your right hand and draw your gaze back to the left side and reach back for your, you know if you start saying too many words people mm -hmm. are like already confused yeah so While then, they're struggling yeah, physically. <laughs> so you need to have really good cues. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of plan what you're trying to do. What are you trying to accomplish with 
the practice itself physically, where are you going with it all? What's the purpose of it? You know, what's the energy you're projecting as an instructor? Are you bringing in a theme or a source of inspiration beyond the physical? Are you remembering to keep everybody's breath focused? Are you giving good posture adjustments physically to students? Is your playlist good? Like, and, and, and working with the energy you're putting out there. You know, and then other teachers bring in like essential oils, and now now we're administering. I'm all up you know, in that essential oil yeah, thing. Like yeah, like <laughs> aromatherapists. Yeah, it's like it's like it's. I don't know where the line ends, um, but it's 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 pretty funny. Like, there's just so many things to think about when you go into teach, but the best instructors are the ones who are authentic. Mm -hmm. The best people are the ones that are authentic. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think I think you, people are more drawn to other people when you can feel like they're just being themselves and that's completely natural and it's not forced yeah. and you gain more success when you do things, when people can feel that that's just you. Yeah, I agree. I was just thinking about that. It's, it's cause it's interesting, like sitting down and having a conversation and actually picturing people listening and being like, <laughs> why the hell would anybody like care what I'm talking about? Like, I, I don't know. I mean, you have interesting things to say. I, I get I'm, to you. That's good. You do <laughs> cool things. Thank you. You know, um, the, the funny thing is I really have a hard time just being social. I, and I maybe I know you kind of mentioned that too. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it is. It's, I need to be in the right mood when I'm in the right mood. I can be really good at it. Oh gosh, absolutely. But I don't know. Like I, I find myself in so many situations where I just feel like the conversation just uh, like, like searching for something to say that's not completely drawn out and mundane and yeah and it's because when it's hard to I have a hard time making small talk yeah the small talk if I go out and you know, I got to make small talk for a long period of time it's super draining it makes yeah, me really I think tired a lot of people feel that way but extroverts like super extroverted people usually are better at that because they just they're just what they feed off of the energy of being around other people yeah whereas people who tend towards introversion kind of need the alone time yeah. to to build up their energy and i think you know when intro, introverted people can be very social yeah but going out into that socialness and being in the wrong type of setting with the wrong type of people and they're doing a lot of small talk yeah and they feel forced and they're doing all that stuff that is so draining and tiring i yeah. feel like i can't go out for like another two weeks sometimes if i get into no, that I, kind I, of I a bad situation agree. i know and, and that's and that's where I think that the challenge can be is to find people who are kind of on that page too, because it's I, a wavelength thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I noticed like, I don't really have like people that I hang out with. A lot. Like I spend a lot of time by myself and I, and I'm good so with that I. because I feel like a lot of times I'm learning so much in that space, but then there also comes a point where I'm just like, man, like I'm really tired of myself right now. I, <laughs> <laughs> would definitely like to hang out with somebody else. Yeah, I hear you. And then I like go ahead, <laughs> attempt to like force. I like call up somebody. I'm like, hey, let's go get a drink. And then I get there. I'm like, the I second gotta, I, I get off go. the phone, I, I got to I gotta go back. Or right home. after I yeah. send the text, usually I'm like, oh, why did I do that? Right. I don't really want to do that. Are you talk? Are we talking? I mean, like this obviously could apply to like any types of friendships, but like I feel like this could be especially be true in like opposite sex relationships too. Yeah, I feel like I have to be a little bit careful sometimes with yeah. that. Because you don't want to, it's kind of that thing if you have guy friends, there's certain guy friends where it's completely chill and it's cool and you can hang out with them. And there's other guy friends where you know you might have to be careful because you don't necessarily want them to think it's a day. Right, you don't right. Need to, it's like a, you got to tread that line a little bit. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? see it being different. But yeah, I'm totally in this weird place where being out doesn't seem to be my focus. Yeah. And, and if I do go out, it's just, it has to be the right company. Yeah. It has to be the right company. It could be a good time. But I think it got to the point where I was, I used to go out all the time. And then it felt like a groundhog's day of going out to the bar. And it was the same night. And I felt like we were having the same conversations. Yep. And it felt like a waste. I was like, what am I doing? What yeah. am I doing? And then now I think what happens is like, if I do go out, it has to be worthwhile. Or it can be just an event, like somebody's birthday. Somebody's like, I'll yeah. for sure show up for those kinds of things. But if I'm out and I'm not, and I'm don't truly want to be there, all my mind is doing the whole time is going like, is thinking about all the things I could be doing at home to be more productive. Yeah. That's all my, that's where my mind is. And I have a hard time being in the present. Yep. I know. In the wrong setting. Definitely. Is that bad? <laughs> I don't know. It just is. It just kind of is.
I know. So you're not feeling very social right now? No, I, I, I'm in a point where I think, so I, I've been like, I think I was, I was in a relationship for about three years on and off and it was a really tumultuous relationship Mm. because, um, we work together and that's, you know, and given the nature of there. the kind of work that I do, <laughs> yeah. especially like, you know, working on stage, playing music, she's like she's the one girl who works at the Shout House. And so that was a very unique relationship for many reasons. Um, but one being like, you know, we shared so much in common from like sharing this unique job that we do to being musicians, to being passionate artist types. And so there was a lot of great things there. Unfortunately, there was a lot of um, like unchecked emotion that just, you know, it led both of us to some pretty dark places. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, like the dysfunction outweighed the positives and eventually it, it just had to give. And I, I think it's, it's it, like that just was what had to happen for both of us to, to move on to a better place. But since then, I, I mean, I was really invested in that very much. Like I wanted that. I That was like one of the first, maybe the first real relationship I on a level that could really entertain the idea of marriage. And even it's funny because like I could say that, but then my family would be like, what the hell are you thinking? Like you guys are fighting every other day. Yeah, but it's how you felt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I was really invested really into it and, and it didn't work out. And, but since then I, and it's been like two years, I I haven't gotten close to that feeling yet. So I've kind of been at, like, everybody I've met, I've kept at an arm's length. And it's not like I'm not trying to find the person. Like, because that's what I'm saying is, like, I really enjoyed that kind of relationship. Like, people, like, everybody's different and looks, I think, looks for different things in relationship. Uh, Like, some couples, like, they thrive on, you know, they live their independent lives and they come together and um, and they, they experience that. But then they really, like, for me, because I'm such an introvert, and I don't like to bounce around and do all these different things. I kind of like to be involved with someone who is like shares similar passions and almost like likes to get into projects that are similar to what I'm working on. And mm-hmm. like, and yeah, I just haven't really found somebody who's kind of one into that, but also there's like that chemistry too. Sure. And so I think that's a, you know, I kind of know exactly what I'm looking for, but at the same time, it's tough because it also makes you like you know if you have a certain lens on that you're looking through Mm. it might affect the way you would view things because sometimes we like think we know what we want but then we really don't but with that said yeah i guess like and i know you've written about this too but just dating being single in 2017 is just you have to have a combination of a thick skin and a sense of humor at the same time you really do mixed with like (laughs) you know, an element of optimism and romanticism. It's like you have to find this balance of it. Yeah. Really. And, the, you know, they, they say that opposites attract, but I always feel like I I gravitate towards people that are similar to me. Yeah. You know, if I see somebody and I see that they, they struggle with the same kinds of things or they, they have the same kind of mindset, like that to me is, is yeah. more attractive. And I think sometimes with people who are more creative types, creative yeah. types look for creative types. Yeah. And then you do tend to have a little bit probably more like emotion- yeah. that goes in there but both of those people feed off of that type exactly. of stuff because it's it's correlated with passion yep and excitement and you feel like that's that's something that's worthwhile whereas like I've tried I mean I've tried I feel like I've tried a little bit of everything yeah in the sense of um I said okay so maybe I shouldn't go for creative types yeah maybe I should and I very intentionally tried to find something different okay like I should find a guy in construction I yeah. should find a guy that's an accountant I yeah. sh- you know like a lawyer, very different types of mindsets. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, maybe, maybe that would be good. Maybe there's a balance to be found there. Sure. And then I found that I went on these dates and I just, I've never felt so little chemistry. Yeah. And even the, com- the conversation, conversation was very difficult yeah. and we just didn't seem to come from the same world. We didn't speak the same language almost. Yeah. It felt oh, I've, like. I've been there. Yeah. And it was hard. And so I'm like, so what am I supposed to, like, so what am I supposed to be looking for? I guess. Yeah. It's it's funny. I and it, I I am in a unique position and because I I work in a in an environment where I'm performing music and there's definitely more females than males generally in the audience and ever since I've been working there I it, it's just part of the job. It's like us like on a very small scale of like what celebrities get to experience is like there's a lot of people that are going you know, to put themselves out there and 
Yeah, and, you're on stage. Yeah, and and like that's I'd attractive be lying to a lot of I, people. I'd be lying if I said that I didn't, you know, have times where I went with that and saw where it went. And sometimes it didn't go that far, but <laughs> but still, you know, there there is fun to be had, and you know, I don't have regrets or anything. But yeah, it's it's really funny. I've noticed a trend that I've met certain people there through work. You know, where it seems like they're very interested, and then the second like I'm a real person, it, it's like, oh wait a second. I don't, yeah. I'm not interested anymore. Because they've created an idealized yeah. version. So that's part of the challenge for me. Like mm-hmm. I met this, I met a girl a couple of weeks ago and um, I was on a break and we were talking for a while and had a drink and it seemed like we had a couple of things. Like she had a dog, I had a dog, um, kind of like a, a couple start. of the same, same, <laughs> yeah, like we talked about going to this place we both wanted to go to and I was like, oh yeah, we should totally go. She was like, yeah, that'd be great. Let me get, get your number. Oh, cool. Um, awesome. And you know, I've. We, we talked for like 45 minutes and it was like one of the better conversations I have with someone. So I was like, cool. I look forward to, you know, maybe seeing this person. And then I think I gave her a text like the next day, like really nice meeting you last night. Um, and, and then I think she responded pretty shortly after the, yeah, totally. Like we should get together. And then I think I responded, you know, and then it's always like that. Oh, should I respond right away? Like I don't, or should God, I wait like five minutes? That's a stupid struggle that yeah. we do. I hate it. It's it's funny though. Because you know, we, we all do it. Because you're worried somebody's judging you on the other end about how quickly you're responding and what you're it, saying. Yeah. Meanwhile, like most of us are sitting there, like with our phones. We're all doing like, it. Why haven't they texted yeah. yet? <laughs> um, so it's so silly. So I responded, and I was like, "Yeah, it's like, oh, you're free on Tuesday." And then the classic happened. Like four. Five hours went by before I got a response. Oh, hey, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just, I just got your message. My phone died. And it was like, I, I don't, like, regardless of what happened, like, I don't care if it took you four or five hours to respond, right. but like the phone dying, your phone never dies. Nobody the lets their phone Nobody's die. Phone dies. silly. Yeah. Nobody's um, phone dies. <laughs> so like just immediately I kind of knew where it was going and I was like already kind of like, oh, no worries. I was like, so did you still want to get together? And then, you know, a few more hours go by. And then I think the next day a text came in. And, and like, without even reading it, I could already say what it was going to say because I could see that it was a kind of a longer text. And it was like, hey, so I'm really sorry. Like, you know, I, I just, I should have mentioned this, but like, I was kind of like seeing somebody and things were a little confusing, but like, I, mean, so I don't think I'm in the best place to, to be dating right now. And I'm like, I'm like, no worries. You know, like, you know, I'm just thinking like, yeah, I, I've, I've seen this thing play out yeah. before. And I've been in been, that situation so many this. times yeah. where it's like, I almost feel like it's kind of like, at this point, this is just a joke. Like, I'm just going to not make plans with anybody ever because it's just the level of flakiness that I've seen. It's everywhere. It's rampant. I know, but it's like, and, and, I've, and I've flaked out too at times. And I, so I get it. So I don't take it personally. And, I, and I'd be hypocritical to judge someone else for it. But at the same time, I feel like there's at least a certain level of flake etiquette that you should adhere to. And That's what we need this day and yeah. age because there's so much flakiness. It's it's the weirdest thing. Like what happens? What happens from us going to like a really good interaction in person to then we like part ways and then you just, and sometimes one person just like it's like they go through this whole like weird mental thing. Yeah. Where they freak out. I think there's, there's too like, many options. I think there's two scenarios actually. Number one is that maybe because I'm out with people and I'm you know I'm delivering my best material but they're laughing at my jokes and you know i'm wearing a good shirt now <laughs> it's just like uh, <laughs> Got my best but i'm like yeah on. like everything's going well you know um and like th- this girl's totally into me and then like so possibility number one is like i'm just reading it way off like this girl's just not really into me that's okay and but i'm just imagining that she is so so that's that's number one um so if it's not that i find that maybe things are going well and they're good but what actually is the case is that this person still has something, some variable, probably some unfinished relationship mm-hmm. that they're kind of still dealing with, and yeah. and that that can be a factor. And I've and I think that's common. And the reason I think that is because when I would be flaky, I think that was actually the reason I was in a relationship. Like I said, it was up and down a lot. So you know, at times I'd be like, I'm over it. I need to move on. Mm. I'd go out with somebody, have a decent time, but like I was then I be like i need to give things another shot with you know the x and and then all of a sudden it was like sorry but like you know yeah it, so it's just a lot of unfinished business yeah so i think that that's actually a pretty common scenario i think that makes sense i feel like at this point i just it, every if if i'm feeling flaky it's usually just because i have unfinished business with myself <laughs> yeah no because i'm stuck i'm in my own 
place and I'm I'm doing that sort of thing. Yeah, but the, the thing with that is like, and then it that that just to me reflects option one that you're just really not that into that person mm -hmm. because yeah I feel because like, if I do meet somebody I'm really into it exactly. changes. That's then, true. Do you feel like you take? I take a long hiatus after a relationship personally. I mean, I always tend I always tend to do that. I don't know why. It's almost like I do it naturally. It's like I had to detox off of whatever I just got out of. Yeah. And part of it's a little bit intentional, I think. I think that's like the healthy approach, probably. I can't say I that, that that's what I normally adhere to. Like, yeah, I, I generally would like to say that I I do, but I often find that, and it's like, I kind of know going in that it's probably not the best move, but it's like the distraction of like, oh, I don't want to just sit here thinking about my ex. Right. I'd rather go out and at least like have a conversation or, or something else that, you know, something different. Yeah. But the problem with that is that oftentimes, regardless of it's good or bad, we have very deep and true connections with our ex. And when we go out with someone new, it's usually the getting to know you is very much like it's not completely real. Mm -hmm. And I think we kind of like as humans will fall back on the, on what is real. So even if it's like a good conversation, it's like, man, yeah, I'm, that was nice and all, but like, I just want to be myself. It's really hard knows. to go from being in a yeah, in a, yeah, in a good, solid relationship with somebody that knows you really well and then go back to the small talk part. Yeah. And go back to that getting to know you and all that stuff. Yeah, that's hard. Which is, which is kind of why I, I think, I don't know, like I don't have a set policy with this, but I, I like kind of an unspoke or unset policy in my head is that I'm just not going to try to date at this point. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do is like just hopefully just meet somebody organically through what I like to do and just share those experiences. And when we hang out, it's not like, Oh, what should we do? Do you want to? It's more like, I mean, and just to be real, I mean, it's probably going to be somebody who is active and probably into yoga, or somebody probably who is, if not a musician themselves, passionate about music or has some type of thing that they're passionate working towards in their own life. I, I just think that that would, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to be there like sitting there trying to, I don't want to try to have to be interested in what this person's saying. Mm -hmm. I just want to be interested in what they're saying. Yep. And I think there's a difference. Yeah. And I want them to be interested in what I'm saying. And that requires having things in common. So naturally, yeah. you'll probably meet them doing the things that you exactly like to do. I think that's how it happened before we had the the dating apps and the internet and the all the other stuff that makes yeah. it. It's interesting. That though, opens because, up the world to us. Well, you we're know? living in a time like no other right now for no other reasons. But like even you know growing up and watching movies and the way things were portrayed in the 50s and 60s and 70s, you know, it seems like people weren't as selective necessarily with, with, it was more just kind of like, okay, well, this is what we do. Like, I'm going to meet somebody and we're going to go on some dates. You met people at school gonna... or in your neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they were just around. And so the dynamics, the structure is so different that I think we're like so picky and selective these days, which is not a bad thing, actually, I don't think. Because granted, that's why, you know, there's so many divorces, but I think part of that is because people you know, can be together and not really know each other. Mm -hmm. And so I do think that it, that although there is like a tremendous level of flakiness today, there also is a, a level of people like really not putting themselves in a situation unless they fully really want to be there or if they're like ready to be there too. I mean, obviously like it's a huge part of personal it. readiness is a huge factor. And I think, you know, I'm thir as I said, I'm 36. I think even five years ago, 31 seems like a good age to get married, but I've learned a lot in the last five years that I don't think I would have been as good of a partner if I hadn't learned those lessons. So Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it seems like a lot of people are taking longer to get married, to, to get into real relationships. Yeah. But it's probably a good thing because you know yourself a lot better. So maybe you're going to be a little bit better at picking your partner. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I always, I have ideals and ideas, mm -hmm. but at the same time, like, you just never really know until you're in the situation. And even if you go into something and you're like completely bonded and things seem good, I still feel like there's a chance things can change in one direction or another. But I think I'll know more on that when it actually happens. For sure. I, try to, I think that's something I always try to adhere to, no matter if it's music, yoga, or relationships, is like is trying to always keep an element of humility and being humble. It's just to knowing that like, like I'm no better than anybody else in the sense of like, I'm, I'm subject to the same insecurities, the same behavioral patterns that, that makes me a challenging person to deal with. And 
you look at it around, like sometimes people would be like, oh, well, look at that relationship. I, I would never put myself in that situation. Well, you know, we can easily say that. And then all mm -hmm. of a sudden we're there one day and we're like. And you're all in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one good thing about making some some pretty big mistakes. Because I've made, I've made some real doozies, you know. Haven't I mean, we all? That's it for, <laughs> we'll, we'll wait till the mic isn't, isn't on for that one. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. You know what I did see? What's that? You put out new music. I did. At the end, it was at the end of last year? Yes. Tell me about that. Yeah, I've been working on this album for a long time. And when I say working on it, I mean like I just it, like would pick at it every now and then. And I think actually there's some really good material on there. It's a little on the slower and kind of contemplative side. So it's not necessarily like go, you know, get psyched up to go out, but definitely probably more like taking a drive or just if you're in a mood to just kind of put some quiet music on at home, I think it lends itself well to that. But it's, it's really weird. My mentality towards making music has changed a lot. And part of it, I think, is once again due to the age we live in. And it's kind of almost like in that same mentality of the, the flakiness is that I really have a hard time believing that people even want to take three or four minutes to listen to a single song anymore. Yeah. And that, that is really a hard pill to swallow if you're going to put your heart into something and put it out there. Because I remember even 10 years ago, putting out an album, it was like something you celebrate and you have an album release party and, you know, people, you get all your friends and you hype it up and you sell a bunch of albums and everyone listens to your album. And it's just like, I feel like I put, now, now I spend time, I release like a song that I put out on YouTube for free and I can't even get my family to listen to it. It's like, yeah. so it's just like, we've changed. So I, it's hard not to get cynical and just be like, nobody cares about the music I'm making. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying that the mentality shifted is that it's, I really do just do it because I feel like, okay, cool. Like I, I like this song. It's something I would probably listen to and I I'll, I'll make this for myself. And when I say that anybody who's ever made music before in a studio, you have your song, you like it, you go into the studio, you record it, you listen to it. A million times and then you're just you don't want to hear it again by the time it's done so you're kind of like well why did i even do like now i don't even want to hear it <laughs> i made yeah. it for me but i don't care so the, the reason for me why i like it is like a couple of years later when i forgot that i made it and i'm like oh wait a second i remember i did this song and i'm like driving and i put it on I'm like yeah it's a pretty good song cool it's like almost like a nostalgic kind of thing yeah and so i think that's like the reward for myself making music at this point, at least the music that I've been putting out in the last few years, because I've released a few, a few kind of short albums. And I think there's been some good songs. Like some, um, there's one song in particular I feel like I really think could catch on to a lot of people because I've had some great feedback. I mean, I remember once I was out with this girl, um, Brazilian girl, and we were, uh, we were driving and I put the song on and like by the end of the song, like, she was like just in tears and I was like, wow, I was like, awesome. You're like, dang, I did it. Yeah. So I was like, that's, that's, a good, that's a good song. And I've, you know, had some similar feedback from other people, not, not maybe not the tears, but like the, this is a really good song. You need to get this on the radio. What song is this? It's, it's a song called Just Want to Know You. I kind of wrote this song actually about this girl who lived in the building that I used to live in. I didn't know her, but I would always kind of walk by her building and she seemed really interesting. Like she had a very artistic look. She had an easel in her window and she always had some funky fashion going on. And I could tell she was a really intriguing person. So that was the idea. I was like, I just kind of want to know this person for some reason. And I may not know anything about her and have anything in common with them, but it's more that sim just that simple idea of just kind of having an interest in somebody. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's all it was. So I think the song actually came from like a real genuine place. You know, it's, it's cool to tap into something like that as opposed to just a lot of times things can be very dramatic. Oh, like I'm in love. Oh, my heart is breaking right now. Um, like that's the traditional angle for writing love songs. It's different to write it from a more of a standpoint of like just taking a simple idea of, of a simple intrigue, right? So I think it started on a good note and then, yeah, it just came together and it's, it's a really pretty song. It's a really nice melody. And yeah, I, I like the song. It's definitely one of the ones I'm proud of. Is that on especially. this newest Stuff um, that you released? That's on what I released um, just before that. I actually uh, had been working with another shout house guy, Bill, Bill Pomerleau, who you know. Mm -hmm. um, and he and I did an album, some songs together. And he he had been there when I was actually kind of putting that song together. And 
So we, we recorded it together and, and released that on under our EP. So it's oh, John nice. and Bill is the EP release. Very nice. Yeah. And it's cool making music with Bill. He's him and I are like really dialed in with each other uh, musically. Like we have a lot of the same kind of, I think, tendencies or sensibilities, I should say. And he's just really, ta really talented guy. Yeah. So that's kind of the interesting thing with creative things these days. It's almost like if people feel like you're not making a ton of money off of it, they don't think it's worth anything sometimes is the way they'll talk to you. Yeah. You know, or even like with my writing, like sometimes people will just be like, oh, you're writing. You have you have this book. Like, but, but why does like is that like your job now? Yeah. Does that make all your money? And I'm like, right. no, it does not so make all my money. It's something you're interested in doing. It's a, yeah, it's it's it, and it's what I like to do. And I feel like I, I, I do it just as much for myself. Yeah. As I do for anybody else to read it, because it's nice. It's nice for me to sometimes just get those thoughts out. Yeah, exactly. And and do something creative and you and you can feel proud of just completing something and yeah, putting it out there. Definitely. You know, there's a satisfaction to be gained from that. And I think and I think um, there's definitely a it's definitely a feeling that like, you know, every every single time before I post something, I always go like, oh, who's going to care? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Who cares? Nobody's going to care. But. I think maybe the mentality we have to have is like, I'm doing it for, I'm doing it for me. Yeah. For and the most true. part. And it's, it doesn't, you know, it, people will take it as they will. And I don't really have any control over that. And that's yeah. cool. And I hope they like it and I hope they read it and I hope they see it or hear it or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, but you do it, you do it for you. And that's the, that's the important part. Yeah. And, and what's interesting today too, is just with technology, the way it is, is that back like not too long ago, people, would follow other people, celebrities, or just interesting social figures, because you know they did interesting things. They had a story. They knew how to represent or market themselves. Everybody can do that now. Everybody is their yeah, own star. It's free game. So it's almost like to really stand out. Yeah, I feel like you have to really be exceptional or just really great marketer or just very popular. Or lucky or know the right people or yeah. there's, there's probably a lot of things that come into play there. But yeah, yeah it's a it's a beautiful thing, and it's a difficult thing yeah. now because there's so much out there yeah so actually what, what, one thing i did want to mention because this is relevant to the music we've talked about and the yoga is because i am somebody who has a lot of free time right i don't have a girlfriend a kid and i just have now i have two dogs so i'll have less Beautiful free time dogs. and i have and i have <laughs> a job that doesn't require me to be there that much so yeah and i'm also want to like do these great things so okay how am i going to stay inspired that's the challenge so when I'm not into a project and I don't have like that purpose, I can really like kind of drift and get a little bit depressed. And, but when I find a project, something to sink my teeth into, I, I live it fully every day. I'm up, I, I sleep less, but it's almost like, cause I don't want to go to bed and, you don't and need I want to wake up mm -hmm. early. And right now I'm feeling that way because I'm in, involved in a project that I'm really ex excited about and looking forward to. And what that project is, I'm fusing two things that I've put a tremendous amount of my life and my effort into, especially in the last several years, is music and yoga. And what I'm doing is I'm going to make a video of myself teaching a yoga class, so a video that people can watch and practice with. But I'm actually creating music, original music, to work specifically with that class. So the energy of the music really goes with the energy of the poses, even some of the themes of the lyrics go with what I'm trying to convey maybe through some of the essential things that I try to bring into my yoga practice, my spiritual practice. And on top of that, um, I have some incredible yogis who are some of my favorite teachers who have volunteered to be in the video. So, I mean, it's just going to be really cool. I have like a, prof a professional videographer coming in to film this and I'm doing it in about a month on June 4th, recording it. I think us yoga instructors, we do take our playlist seriously. And sometimes it's easy to just throw on, I don't know, everyone jokes, like, just put the thiev thievery corporation on and just hang out. Right. And it, it's great for yoga, but, like, I want to create something that really is just feels, like, great to practice to. Or maybe it's great to just take a run to or just, to like, music that, like, helps enhance the experience. And being that I know music really well and I know music uh, yoga decently well now, too, I guess, I think I'm in a unique position to kind of fuse those th two things together. That sounds like an awesome project. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Nice. Yeah. And that's going to be uh, like a YouTube? Yeah, I'll have it on YouTube. I'll probably put it up on, you know, all my social media sites or, yeah, and I don't, like, know if I'm going to sell it or not. I, I don't, once again, I don't know 
who is buying things or anything. But yeah. the, the goal isn't really to make money as much as to just do this awesome project. And I think the best thing that could come out of it is maybe finding more of my niche in terms of what I'm doing with yoga and music. I obviously like I, it's cool as a performer and also as a teacher to have people who either one show up to hear you play or two show up to learn from you. So it keeps me learning and active. So if I can build to that and kind of take another jump in my own practice, then it's a win. So that's the goal with it. Absolutely. That sounds like it'll be a pretty cool experience. Sounds yeah. like a full experience. Yeah. Well, it's cool too, because you, certain uh, yoga classes will incorporate live music. Mm -hmm. And so I I've, did that one time. It was very cool. Yeah. And the challenge as you know, with that is as a musician playing in a yoga class is if you're singing, your, your voice is probably drowning out the instructor's cues. Mm. So it's kind of knowing when to sing, when people are just moving and for that 20, 30 seconds where the instructor doesn't have to talk. So I'm just trying to find the seams and kind of work everything in there. Yeah, that's an art form in and of itself. Yeah. And I, at the studio I teach at, which is uh, downtown Pura Vida, um, we, we're going to start doing a monthly live music class. And it's kind of cool. Like the first half of it's a little more upbeat yoga, faster paced. But the last half is a lot of long held stretches. And I, that's when I get to really perform songs. And I, I'd like to build that up and have more people come into that. Yeah, that sounds like it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Your studio's downtown? Yep. What did you say the name of it was? Pura Vida. Nice. And what are your socials? So my favorite number is 22. So I am under John Coyle 22, and there's no H in John. So it's J-O-N-C-O-Y-L-E 22, and that's my Instagram. And then YouTube is under my name. And, and on iTunes? All I use. Uh, iTunes just under my name, Jonathan Coyle. Perfect. Yep. Awesome. It was really nice talking with you nice after you not you seeing you for so long. Definitely. Thank you for Thank doing you. it. Thank you, Courtney. That's it for this one, you guys. Thanks for being here. And I hope you'll join me again for another podcast next Tuesday. If you're feeling generous, go ahead and subscribe and leave a nice rating. I'd very much appreciate it. If you want to keep in touch with me, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Courtney Diamond. Or you can head over to CourtneyDiamond.com to keep up with my blog. A new one just got posted the other day. Um, if there's anything you ever want to hear me talk about with my guests, let me know because I would love to hear from you. And with that, I'm out of here. Hope you guys all have an amazing day or night and I'll talk to you soon.